I'll bet you think that the best place to buy groceries is the grocery store. Anybody would know that, right? Wrong. We're at the Pike Place Market to show you how to really shop and save some money, too. Perfect pears here today, folks. Taylor Gold pears are here now. Come on in for a taste. I'm Dorothy Wilhelm at the Pike Place Market, and I've got a little secret to share with you. You know, growing up, when I was young, science was the big deal. And so we thought that everything done scientifically, for instance, at the supermarket where meat was wrapped in packages and vegetables were in bags, that was the best way to get good food. Well, now we're finding out that sure isn't true. But I'm embarrassed to say I don't know what to buy. So. With the help of the patron saint of the Pike Place Market, author and cooking expert Braden Rex Johnson, we're going to go through the market, learn how to buy good food, and we're going to learn how to cook things even I can prepare. Don't turn your back for a minute. It's never too late. Thanks, my dear. There you go, miss. Want to drop it in? There you go. Thanks, Thank you. I'd like to start with my simple soy glaze. This is a five ingredient recipe I've made hundreds of times, and you're going to actually help me whisk. Why, how wonderful of me. Right, what am so I going to do? Going oh, I'm not good at this, you know. One Whiskey. tablespoon of canola oil or a light oil, like a okay. vegetable oil, something like that, that's light and doesn't have really, frankly, a whole lot of flavor. All right, then we're going to add a me. tablespoon of soy sauce. How much now? So a, ta okay. a tablespoon of canola, tablespoon of, of soy sauce. Soy. Okay, and you can Number use three. low sodium if you like, or you can use regular. A tablespoon of maple syrup, brown sugar, or honey. I see where this is going. The first three ingredients are all tablespoons. Are the, four. The, the, the first four. 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 And then we're going four. to add a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Ooh. Okay, now you better get on the ball there. Oh, start. I didn't. Yeah. you didn't tell me yeah, I had to start. You need to start. start whisking. All right, so here Whoops. comes finally our mustard. Do you have a preferred technique for whisking? And this isn't it, I suppose. Um, it's not the proper technique. <laughs> well, I'll give you. Do you want to give, give me a little, little? There. You hold it like that, and you go on a figure eight. Oh, nobody ever told me that. <laughs> well, you're, you, you, know, you wouldn't need to really know that. You can get the job done. And then this is just going to be, this is where we change from one tablespoon to a teaspoon and a half, and you don't have to be totally perfect here, of prepared horseradish. And so next, what we're going to do is take our beautiful Copper River salmon oh, king it is beautiful. and our some halibut that we bought at the market today, and we're just going to put a little of the glaze on each. You can be generous, and we're going to keep glazing the fish about every three minutes and cooking it for anywhere from 10 to 15, depending on how much you like your salmon and halibut done. While the salmon broiled, Braden combined fresh from the market asparagus with equal parts of balsamic vinegar and olive oil with Australian pink sea salt to taste for a picture-perfect salad. It looked good enough to eat right then, but Braden had plans for the cherries and hazelnuts that we bought earlier at the Pike Place Market. Remember the dried cherries we bought at the market? Yes, I do. We're going to now plump them up and make, make them taste even better. So I need you to measure about a quarter of a cup of that nice Madeira into that cup for me. See, there's nice Madeira. I'm sure I can do that. And you can use Madeira for this. You can use port. If you don't want the alcohol, you can use cherry juice. But we're going to go for the Madeira. That's Th perfect. That was a generous <laughs> quarter That's cup. That's beautiful. We're what gonna... do we call this recipe, by the way? Oh, I don't know. Dried cherries and hazelnuts with glazed asparagus, grilled asparagus. <laughs> Well, it's not exactly a catchy title, but it looks awfully good. You know, it would never have Ooh. occurred to me to... Ooh. Oh, Madeira no. facial. Mm. <laughs> Do you see those wrinkles just disappearing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here are the cherries. We're yeah. just dumping about equal parts of the wine and the cherries in there. And then we're simply going to... See, they're just they're just going to bathe mm. in there. I know. They're just going to like a tea bag steep in there. And then we're just going to cover them, and we're going to put it aside for... oh. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long. By the magic of television, <laughs> we have some already prepared. So I if you'd would. like to taste one, I would like to be taste nice and one. boozy and yummy mm. by now. Mm. Mm. And so see, it just grabs that. Mm. It just grabs that. They look like raisins, don't they? Yeah, it? they're really tasty. So we're going to. I'll work have with another this. one. <laughs> don't eat too many. <laughs> You're still on camera. All I right, another yummy touch that we're going to make for the salad 
is um, some hazelnuts, the hazelnuts mm. we bought. This is a pan on medium heat. Often you'll read that you have to crank up your whole oven to 400 to roast right. half, to yeah. toast half a cup of nuts, which is the stupidest thing. It's not energy efficient. It's not a good thing to do. Take your nuts, put them on your stove top. Uh, the pan's on medium. It takes about three minutes, and in about three minutes they'll start smelling nutty, and they'll, you get that aroma. It's just yummy. So all I'm going to do is take a couple of beautiful cherries and sprinkle them around. We have a little bit of endive. I thought that might be a nice little touch with a salad. And then, of course, we have some of the fresh cherries, which are looking so beautiful, so oh, dried wow. and fresh. And then here are some of our toasted hazelnuts. We're just going to sprinkle those on there a little bit. And then for a nice little coup de gras, just a little bit more of the balsamic vinegar. So there's that. And Ooh, then it looks so good. Wait till you see the salmon and the halibut, though. They look so good, I must say. Now that so, is beautiful salmon. And now the white, is it halibut? Is that halibut? Or, right. Halibut and right. salmon. Right. But they look totally different than what you usually see in the supermarket. And that was one of the things I really wanted to get to. Well, is, yeah, and again, I think that glaze just gives it such oh, it a does. glorious it's beautiful. color. I mean, essentially, that is just, it's, and look at how beautifully it's cooked. And there it comes right off the pan. So that's a beautiful piece of that. And um, of course, there's always more, but I just wanted you to kind of try that a little bit and just see. Oh, it looks wonderful. See how good it is. So. And you didn't cook it. I think we always were, are in danger of overcooking. You cooked it. That's a very yeah. thick piece. Thank I would have probably cooked it half an hour. Yeah, no, I think it's just about mm, done. It might smells take great. Maybe a minute more, but I, that's the way I really like it. So if you like it more done, just keep that one just, longer. Just yeah. go put it back in. Can I, can I try it? That's, you've got to try everything. And I, I really do hope that you like it. Oh, believe me, I hope so too. <laughs> I know I will. It looks wonderful. And you know, every Northwest cook mm. has one of these oh. recipes oh. that's the soy and the and the sugar and, and, and the mustard. And I think this is mine. So Oh, it's wonderful. But I know how would people pretend, which seems quite likely to me, that people would like to find the recipe for the, your five ingredients sure. soy glaze. What glaze were they? Well find thank you. It? That's very nice of you to ask. It is in my Pike Place Public Market Seafood Cookbook on page one seventeen. But again, it's such a simple recipe, we can probably put it up on one of our websites. How do you start making selections? Supposing I am bravely going to the market with my recyclable bag. And your other bags. And yes. my other bags. Yes. What, what, what should I start with? Ingredients for a nice green salad? What, what would be great? Well, I always like to say the most important thing of shopping from any farmer or fishmonger is build a relationship trust the person, know them, ask for recipes, ask for shopping tips, and that personal connection, that thing our mothers had, is what's going to bring us back to the freshest, best foods. It's a lot different than buying something from the supermarket that has been, you know, perhaps in the food delivery system for two weeks and has traveled 1,300 miles. Just as when you, you asked the fishmonger what you were having for dinner. I just yeah. thought that was the most wonderful thing. It's very European. Yeah. It's a very European style of life, which I think is wonderful and, and something that we need to grasp and, and return to. Yeah. Well, Braden, there's just one more thing to say. Thank you so much for inviting us into your lovely home, and do you happen to have any more of that lovely salmon? Coming right up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. People come to the Pike Place Market from all over the world. I know I have. I'm Kay Lynx and I'm the Vice Chamberlain of a beautiful island paradise known only as Utopia. It's in a beautiful Gilbert and Sullivan operetta called Utopia Limited, which is produced by the Gilbert and Sullivan Society of Seattle. They do a wonderful show. They only do one show per year, so it's the best show in town. I think you'll love it. This is the Seattle Gilbert and Sullivan Society's 55th season. We've been at this a while, but this is the first time that Utopia Limited has been presented in almost 20 years. Oh, it's a good, good show. It really is surprising what the farmer emphasizing. We have brought about Utopia's first and other land. In an enterprising moment, she is eager with improvements which we dutifully offer to our motherland. City we have beautified, we've done it willy-nilly, and all that isn't Belgrave Square is slant and Piccadilly. We haven't any slumber in England. We've solved the labor question with discrimination polished, so poverty is obsolete and hunger is abolished. We are going to abolish it in England. The chamber.